What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to be testing out a dedicated GPU on the all new ASRock A300. If you're not familiar with the Desk Mini A300, I've done a few videos on it, I'll leave links in the description, but basically what we have here from ASRock is a super tiny Ryzen APU powered mini desktop. It supports the 200GE, the 220GE, the 240GE, the 2200G, and the 2400G. It's a bare bones kit, so you will have to add your own CPU, RAM, and storage, but at $150, I think this is an awesome little setup. The A300 was not designed to support a dedicated GPU, but we're gonna add one here, and you're gonna hear me refer to it as an eGPU, or an external GPU. I'm going to be going with the ASRock Phantom Gaming RX 590 8GB card. This is a great card. I'll leave links to everything that I'm using in the description. Unfortunately, the Desk Mini doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, so we're going to have to add this with an M.2 to PCIe X4 adapter. Luckily, the A300 has two M.2 slots that support PCIe X4. So I'm going to be using one for the adapter, and there's one on the underside of the board that could be used for an M.2 storage device. There are several ways that we can connect the video card from PCIe X16 to the PCIe X4 adapter that we have. The easiest method would be order an X16 ribbon cable from Amazon for about $9. You could also just remove the I.O. plate from the GPU and place it right in that M.2 to X4 adapter that we have installed. Another method would be to order a 90 degree X16 slot and you can have something that looks like this. Personally, a little GPU riser dock from Amazon is going to work fine. Most of these do come with the X16 ribbon cable, and it's pretty high quality. So you have a stand for the GPU, you can plug it right into the board itself, and it holds the GPU in place quite well. The M.2 slot's just not going to put out enough power for this GPU, so we will have to use an external power supply. I'm using a little mini Molex that connects right to that M.2 connector. And I'll also need power for the GPU, a little 8-pin connector or 6-pin depending on the GPU you're using. So when it's all set up, it'll look something like this. Or if you want to buy a few different adapters like a 90 degree and an extension, you can set it up to look like this. I'm using an M.2 to PCIe X4 on the rear M.2 slot on this motherboard. And I also have a little 90 degree adapter and the card just plugs right in. I think it looks good like this. So in this video, I'm going to be testing out a bunch of PC games running at 1080p ultra settings, but before we get into it, I just want to go over the full specs of this setup here. I'm using the motherboard out of the Desk Mini A300, it's Mini STX. For the CPU, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 2400G. This is 4 cores, 8 threads, with a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a boost up to 3.9. 16 GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 clocked at 3000 MHz. The GPU is an ASRock RX 590 8GB Phantom Gaming version. Initially, I was going to go with an NVIDIA GT 1030 or the 1050. Unfortunately, both of those cards would not post. They just wouldn't work with this M.2 adapter in this board. It's beyond me why it wouldn't work, because in the past, I've been able to get both of those same exact cards to work with the same adapter on a different system, like an Intel NUC or the Latte Panda. However, I did test out a GTX 1060, an RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080. All three of those worked, along with the RX 590. I wanted to keep with the AMD theme, so I went with the 590. If you guys are really interested in seeing an RTX 2080 Ti on this system, let me know in the comments below. For storage, I'm using a Kingston A1240 Gigabyte NVMe M.2, and that's attached to the top M.2 slot. The power supply that's powering the GPU itself is a Seasonic Focus SGX650. It's way overkill. I mean, you could use a cheap power supply to get this done. And for the operating system, I'm running Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. Another thing to note is since we're running from an M.2 slot, we're not running at PCIe X16 speeds. We're running at PCIe X4 3.0 speeds. It is slower than X16, so the GPU is not going to perform at its maximum potential, but in all the tests that I've seen around the web, you can get anywhere from a 5 to a 20% decrease in performance depending on the game and the setup using X4 versus X16. So with all that out of the way, let's see how this little rig performs. First game we have here is Apex Legends 1080p. I'm just going to max everything out in the settings menu. I'm only going to be testing 1080p in this video with ultra settings or very high depending on what the game has in the menu. 
Up in the top left hand corner we do have afterburner running. It'll show us our GPU temperature, usage, CPU usage, clock speed, our FPS, minimum, average, and maximum. I'm also going to leave the settings used and the name of the game on screen so you know what's playing at any time. And by the way, I got destroyed pretty much as soon as I dropped in here. So far so good. I always like showing off a little bit of gameplay first. We're moving over to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now I ran the built-in benchmarks here. This is ultra high settings, 1080p, this is as high as we can go at 1080p. This is a very CPU intensive game and I think that's what it comes down to with this 2400G. We had an average of 37, a minimum of 21, and a maximum of 58. Remember, this is at ultra high settings. This is the highest detail we can do at 1080p. So I dropped it down to high settings and ran the benchmark again, and we still didn't fare too well. Average of 42, minimum of 20, and a maximum of 70. I'm really not sure if we could get a constant 60 out of this game, even if we went down to medium settings. Next up, the built-in Far Cry 5 benchmark, 1080p, ultra settings, minimum of 52, average of 65, and a maximum of 76. It actually performed pretty decently, but I wanted to see how much we could get out of this if we went to high settings. So on high settings, we had a minimum of 55, an average of 68, and a maximum of 81. Pretty good performance here, and you'd have a good time playing this on Ultra also. Just turn on V-Sync. I also tested a bunch of other games. I made a little average FPS chart for Rocket League, 231, CSGO, 154, Overwatch, 88, Fortnite, 72, Resident Evil 2 Remake, 72, The Witcher 3, 63, and PUBG, 49. 
Keep in mind that everything's maxed out with these games, so PUBG, if you dropped it down to medium settings or medium high mix, you could get a constant 60 out of it. But with each of these other games, the playability was awesome on Ultra. So the main question I'm going to get in the comments is why, and it boils down to because we can, because it can be done. I've built PCs that will outperform this. I have tutorials on my channel if you want to check those out, or you can check out the 10 million other ones on YouTube. I also have several other videos on external GPUs over Thunderbolt and M.2. I use these with many PCs. I personally enjoy doing it, and I know there are a ton of people out there that also like seeing this kind of stuff and doing it themselves. So if you've recently purchased an A300 and you've been wondering if an external M.2 GPU will work, the answer is yes. Unfortunately, a GT1030 and a 1050 wouldn't work in my case, but if you have a different card, it may work. Not 100% on it, but I do know that the AMD RX series and the NVIDIA 20 series will work like this. I will leave Amazon links in the description for everything that I used in this video. I'm not sure if the A300 is available on Amazon yet, but I know you can get one on Newegg. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're interested in seeing a more powerful card on this unit, like an RTX 2080 Ti, just let me know in the comments below and I can get something made up. If you could, hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.